my mom characterized um, the videos of Jordan Peterson, of Stefan Molyneux. She said, she told me it would be good for me to put down the propaganda. <sighs> well, you know, just she's some... kind of telling you something true there, isn't she? <laughs> just not in the yeah. way. Like the, the, the most painful things to hear are the ones that contain an element of truth, right? So who's giving you propaganda is your parents, right? She's saying you got to put down the propaganda. And it's like, maybe I do, Mom. Maybe I do. But why are you Mom. doing all the work in your family? You doing all the work yeah. is stripping them of agency. If you change the pattern of history, my friend, if you change the pattern of history, if you defy the dominoes, a lot of people are going to hate you. But I think I got a taste of that um, a couple days ago, which led me to, to reaching out to you. I got a taste of that with my sister when I... Um, <sighs> yeah, especially with my sister. Um, at least from how, what I can tell, my relationship with her matters the most. And, um, you know, I've been trying to sort of give her the gift of knowledge that I was given. And what I mean by that is I want to be able to tell her about what's been going on in the world and the culture and what has been going on in law and policy. And it's like these are very important things in order to orient yourself properly in the world. And not only did she reject my gift, she doesn't want it. She chose for herself not to have it. And she doesn't understand me. She doesn't care to understand me. She's, she's more comfortable labeling me as something dastardly than to actually take the time to maybe watch your video one time or to do something, you know, just to, to extend a knowledge olive branch. There's none of that. The what other day I was you? trying to- What did she call you? You said she labels you. What does she label you? I, I want to. I don't want to misrepresent. I want to get exactly what she said right. She said that the stuff that I watch can be. I I can get really obsessive, and I it's worrisome, and that I'm not going to. Um, people are going going to not want to associate with me, and that they're going to. Um, that I'm going to come across as being obsessed and and crazy, and that it's like. Not if you look at the evidence. If you looked at the evidence, then we wouldn't be having this conversation. I'm really sorry, man. That's uh, that's a terrible thing to hear. It's a terrible thing. It to pisses hear. me off. She, she could be, her and I could be so much more than we are, and um, she's choosing not to go down that. Right. Because here's the chilling she, thing, man. Women are the weather vane of power in society because women in general score very high on agreeableness, which means agreeableness sounds like you get along with people. No, agreeableness means that you figure out who has the most power, you conform with them, and you reject or ostracize or attack or dismiss everyone else. So where oh, women are, who they attack and who they align with is this giant weather vane. Like, you know, the little things um, on top of the barn, like the weather vane, that it's usually a chicken or something like that. And it tells you which way the wind yeah. is blowing, right? And if exactly. you want to know where power is in society, look at who women are attacking and look, look at who they're defending, which is why the idea of white privilege is so ridiculous, because women as a whole attack white males in particular. And the idea that there's white privilege, if you ever want to know who you can't uh, criticize, so look at who women are defending. And if you ever want to know who it's perfectly safe to criticize, look at whoever women are attacking. And uh, your sister is signaling that very, very clearly. One of your big complaints is that you are unable to get your family to face the reality of the world that they live in. Right? Yes. You're not facing the reality of your family, the world that you live in. Wow. You are doing exactly what you criticize them for doing. You say, have a look at reality. Have a look at the facts. Have a look at the data. Have a look at the evidence. And they say, no, I reject it. I reject the evidence. I reject the facts. I reject the truth. And you look at them and you say, well, I'm sure I can change them. <laughs> You're doing exactly <laughs> what they're doing. You're rejecting the empirical oh, evidence, the data, the facts, the communications, the language that your family uses. You are rejecting the reality of your family. And then you're really upset that they reject social or political reality. But you're doing the same thing. They're telling you who they are. 
They're telling you what they think. They're telling you they won't change. But you're like, nope, I'm going back in. <laughs> you know, you are rejecting reality while complaining that they won't accept the truth. What truth are you accepting about your family? They're very clear, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, they are. Physician, heal thyself, as the phrase goes. You want them to start accepting reality. Why don't you lead the way? They're not going to change. Or if they do change, it will have nothing to do with you trying to make them change. Right now, yeah. you trying to make them change is causing them to dig into their position. You know the facts as well as I do, that if you give certain people, defended people, if you give people information that runs counter to their worldview, they double down on their worldview. You know that, right? You know that. I mean, certainly you've right. listened to this show. I've talked about it about 12 million times, right? Multiple times, yeah. <laughs> and so... Mm. Sorry. You can't change them. And they're very clear. The, the data says that. They say that. Like, once you call someone crazy, they will have they have no power to change you. And that's why you call someone crazy. Or it could be one of the reasons, right? Like, if there's some crazy guy on the street corner, right, screaming and shaking a magazine at the sky and, and talking about space aliens coming in the morning to deliver him his Cheerios, are you going to join that guy? No, because th he's crazy. So as soon as somebody calls you crazy, boom, that's done. Your influence over them is gone because nobody wants to be crazy. Nobody wants to join the crazy people, right? Right. They're very clear. You're crazy. You're obsessed. This is bad. This is wrong. So of course, then, I mean, very clear. They're not going to change. And if you and if you want them to change, you've certainly got to stop trying. Because by discrediting, like they discredit you so they don't have to look at the ideas. And the more yeah. you want to get them to look at the ideas, the more desperate you become to try and drag them to the truth, the more they get to laugh at you for being obsessive. It's a very clear game, right? So you, I mean, something may change at some point somehow, but it ain't coming from you. And it sure as heck ain't coming from these videos, right? So that's clear. And... I assume you've been trying for a while and you've made not only no progress, but negative progress in that they think that you're crazier now than before you started, right? Right. So My who is rejecting reality even... the most? Me. Yeah. I am. That's right, my friend. You are rejecting reality the most. All the while saying, I just, I want my parents and I want my family and I want my friends to face the truth. Well, you got to lead them, right? It's the only chance that it could have exactly i just want to i want to be able to get to that point i have it in me to get to that point i need to own up to myself and they need to own up to themselves i can't be focused on them for for my life that's terrible <sighs> but it's what they want you see this is part of the way that society doesn't change is families in particular trap free thinkers into trying to change the family and they erode your desire to get out of fucking bed in the morning eventually oh yeah this is what you're facing right why do i not have enthusiasm why am i brooding in my own head why what was it you said here very kind-hearted person but ultimately hollow and very negative right you understand who's hollowing you out it's they're drawing you into this you're desperate for them to change. They refuse to change. And you exhaust yourself doing this. And you paralyze yourself doing this. And that's part of how the world doesn't change, is it kind of tries to bait you into trying to change what you can't change so you burn out. You know, that's, that's exactly right. It is I've, right. 